I miss him very much. I, I was first in John's presence as a screaming teenager back in the 1960s at um, a Sydney television program called Saturday Date. And it was at lunchtime and I went with uh, my girlfriend and we uh, thought it was just incredible. We were allowed out for that day. And my girlfriend and I went screaming onto the dance floor or onto the floor where Ray Brown and the Whispers were playing and we touched Ray. John was over to the left, of course. Uh, touched Ray, ran back, into the, ran back into the audience and continued screaming, as you did when you were 15 or 16, all those thousands of years ago. It was wonderful. The next time, they were my favourite band, and I guess, Jenny, you did that lots of times. <laughs> screaming. <laughs> at Ray Brown and the Whispers. The next time I was in his presence was about 12 or 13 years ago at Bain Basin radio station when I became an announcer there. And in came John, and uh, we just hit it off. And I loved his knowledge of music. We always bantered. I had one show, he had another. And it was just an incredible privilege to be with near him, talking to him. We just rave, rave, rave about music all the time. The airwaves are a lonelier place without him. He was an incredible guy. His knowledge of music, his musicianship was formidable and he is surely missed and I'm sure you miss him as well. But uh, as they say, the show must go on. I'd like to welcome John's son, John, up to say a few words to you. Thank you. Thanks, Mario. really appreciate that. Um, guys, I've literally only just come in from the beach um, and I've come here today. Thank you for the opportunity. I've written a few words to talk about Dad and I just want to really talk about what he was passionate about. So, so um, you know, thanks again for all your attendance this afternoon. Um, I just, as I said, Dad was passionate about his music, his family and his life on the coast. Um, Dad's life was all about music, sharing that and encouraging others. An example of this encouragement um, was the support of his own granddaughter, my niece. Um, she's recently released an EP on, on iTunes and Spotify and she's in Nashville at the moment promoting her own career with a guitar that he actually gifted her. Uh, let me see. From the mid-90s, uh, Dad semi-retired and spent most of his time at his home in Century Point, um, where he loved the coastal life, which led to his involvement in community radio and the pursuit of his love of music in various bands. Dad, my dad was a very proud man, and even though he was sick for a long time, he never complained, as he didn't want to worry his family and friends. Um, I have so many fond memories of him. Um, and I'm sure you all do as well, but um, that's why we're all here today. I love you, Dad. I miss you. Thanks, everyone. I'd like to welcome Jenny Armstrong up. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Jenny, and for those that don't know, I was John's co-host for 12 years on Mixed Bag. But I'm going to talk about his music today, just his music. Excuse the notes. It's big proof, though. You know, although it is an honour for me to speak today, I, I never wanted to be here doing John's last gig for him. However, it is because of him and our shared journey that I feel I'm the lucky one to be able to do it. Now, the following I've actually taken from John's own words from an autobiography that he started. And this is what it says. John thought music was for sissies, until his mum took him to the Sydney Stadium to see Louis Armstrong. He was hooked, he was hooked. He wanted to be in a band, not a star, just be in a band and play. Drumming was his first desire, lucky Lee, hey? <laughs> uh, until Elvis hit the scene, and then when Elvis hit the scene, it was to be the guitar, the guitar. His dad went Garen Tall, and he bought his first guitar and amp at about the age of 14. He had lessons and he just couldn't get it. He just couldn't get it. It was when he went to see Bill Haley and the Comets at the Sydney Stadium that musically his life was changed forever. Now I'm going to quote. This is actually a quote. One guy was playing what I thought was a guitar with the, with the longest neck I had ever seen. It made a magical throbbing pounding beat the sound the feel that's what I want to play 
I found out later it was a Fender bass. I took two strings off a guitar that I had made and man, I had a bass. <laughs> there were very few electric bass guitar players or teachers in Australia in the 60s and I didn't know how to do it. I became very frustrated, gave it away and spent my time chasing girls and boxing. <laughs> so that was his quote. Of course, we do know that John went on to become a very fine bass player and introducing the six-string bass into this country. The bass was not just an instrument to him, but an extension of him. He really felt it. He collected about 45 guitars and basses and he named each and every one of them. A little known fact about John is that he is featured in the Year 10 school curriculum for his experiences and his memories and as a pioneer of rock and roll music in this country. The Ray Brown the Whispers era, it is good, it deserves an applause, doesn't it? It's terrific, yeah. Ray Brown the Whispers era was a phenomenal time for John musically and personally. His friendships in the Australian music scene remain close. The radio became a tremendous tool for him to promote all these Australian artists, the scene, and this he did with a passion. And I have to say, just last night, we got a very best wishes to everybody from Brian Cadd, who found out that he passed away, yeah. Um, John established himself in this Shoalhaven music scene in the 90s, and he left the Sydney scene behind, although he did freelance at times with, uh, for some of his mates. For more than 22 years, he was a valued member of several bands down here on the coast, namely Big Deal, <laughs> Mosaics, Jacques, and of course, Shrewd Rhythm. Most of these band people are around today, which is terrific, I thank you. Throughout his playing career, he would have to be the most reliable band member, always available for a gig, always, and always there for, it's a rehearsal, but I called it training once, and it stayed as training. <laughs> Throughout his playing career, he, as I said, was the most reliable one. If you said to him, what was your favourite gig? It was always the next one. The next one. John's last gig was Sunday the 29th of July 2018. It was very memorable to those that were there as you will testify, it was memorable. Extremely unwell, barely unable to even hold the bass. He somehow managed to play that gig and what's more, he didn't miss a note, not one. It was the support of these guys, Shrewd Rhythm, that got him through that and the audience. Graham, the audience. The audience just got up and spurred him along and danced, it was absolutely memorable. I would like to thank you all because that meant in his whole playing career of 60 years, he never missed a gig, ever. Yeah, it is worth it, of course. However, after that gig, he didn't pick up his bass again. That was the end of it. He passed away three months later on the 5th of November, 2018. Now to me, John was a warm, caring, loyal, intelligent, storytelling, practical joker. That was him. An unassuming man who consistently played down his achievements. As John would say, I hope you enjoyed the music as much as I enjoyed presenting it. We can't make any more memories with John, so maybe you'd like to share some of yours, and maybe you'd just like to introduce yourself to John's son and just tell him a story that you have of a memory. So, this is a wrap. Thank you. Thank you to John. And in the words of Charlie Puth, the singer, it's been a long day without you, my friend, and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. <laughs>